Our next discussion is a conversation about a vision for the future of healthcare. The moderator, Deb Troutman, president and CEO of the American Association of Colleges of Nursing and a Research America board member, will be joined in conversation by Jan Herzoff, president of Elsevier Health, about a recent report and what the findings might mean for the direction of the future of healthcare. Deb? Jan, it's great to see you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Deb. Yeah, it's really great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Sure. Well, I appreciate that we're going to have an opportunity to talk about a report that was recently released uh, called The Clinician of the Future. I did have the opportunity to review the report, and I found it very interesting, as well as the findings to me are congruent with many other recent reports that have been released from the National Academy of Medicine, uh, the future of the future of health care and the future of nursing. So I was pleased to see that congruence, but also noted some differences. So we will be putting a link in the chat for those who've not read the report yet. But I'd like to ask if you would tell us a bit about what generated the idea for the report and then highlight some of the findings. Sounds great, Deb. So firstly, again, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak about this important topic today. So um, we at Elsevier Health have conducted this report in partnership with Ipsos, and it's really a global research topic, interviewing and uh, serving thousands of doctors and nurses across the globe, and to understand what's important really for the future of healthcare and their role as clinicians in the next decade. And we have gone directly to the frontline, to the frontline healthcare workers to listen to them and really giving them a voice to raise their concerns and recommendations to create a um, type of industry roadmap, really, for the actions that they suggest. Now, when we look at the report, there were three main areas that I found most interesting <clears throat> that the clinicians raised. So one was really about broader skill training, particularly in the areas of health data and technology. Second one was really around empathy and how to preserve empathy in a changing patient provider relationship, giving all the telehealth that has really increased a lot during the pandemic. And then finally, really the expanded healthcare workforce. So how can we uh, overall help to increase the overall number of healthcare professionals? How can we also have a broader set of multidisciplinary professionals in the healthcare field? So these were really the three main areas that the clinicians raised in the report. Great, thank you, thanks. Did you note significant differences, if any, across the health professions or the different providers, nursing and physician in particular? So you know that when I look at it, there were, in fact, many more similarities, especially in the US, responses and differences between nurses and doctors. Um, there were two areas where we saw some significant differences, though. So one was related to cost. So we had a question, for example, around there's too much focus on cost rather than care. And here, 75% of doctors agreed and 88% of nurses agreed. So it was a much more important topic. It was important for doctors as well, but even more important for the nurses. And the other one was really around the volume of patient data um, and how um, clinicians feel that it's more and more getting, that they're getting overwhelmed by that. Here, doctors agreed um, more. They had more than 75% of doctors in the US agreed. Um, there was um, less than 70 on the nursing side. So these were some of the areas where we saw some differences, but overall, it was actually pretty consistent. Great, thank you, thanks. When you mentioned data, I recall also that the report connected with the, as we advance technology, uh, we've had some learnings. One of them is that uh, technology isn't always designed with the end user in mind and that that creates challenges and opportunities, one might say. Uh, is, would you like to comment a little bit further with respect to anything in particular that you learned or you would recognize or advise us around how we bring together those who are developing technology and the end users? And do we need to think about doing anything differently with respect to education and uh, training? Yeah, that's good. I mean, there is, when I look at it, so the, there are multiple things here in relation to, to this question. Deb. So one is um, more than 71% of the US clinicians really reported that they're overwhelmed by the data, by the current volume of data, and also feel that more and more the widespread use of health technologies and increasing amount of data 
even makes an increasing burden in the future. And <clears throat> they really raise the point around how can how can solutions be designed to rather indeed help them and not create additional burden? And in the moment, a lot of the, um, the platforms and tools that are deployed in hospitals really create a lot of interaction, information overload. You get pop-ups all the time on your screen, uh, warning you on things, what you, what you can't do, what you have to do. So there's a lot of um, anxiety around that. And that's something we really, I guess also overall as an industry and working with engineers, researchers on how we can improve that. That's really an obligation for us to really work on and really improve. Um, and here, one interesting element, so one is partly related to the design of, of the products. Another one is um, how we indeed train. And I give you an example. Um, one interesting thing we, we were just um, working on is um, we are currently working on primary care pathways in India and uh, deploying those and plan to deploy those for more than 250,000 frontline healthcare workers in multiple states across India. Now, we need to train them on these primary care pathways. And we looked at different types of training. And very often, the training modules are very complicated, very, um, um, especially depending on the skill level of the, of the healthcare workers, we need to be mindful of that. And one thing that we found out what was really very useful for these type of trainings are very, very short, very engaging videos, um, animated videos that we have now created um, to really help, um, help them um, learning much, much faster these new solutions and understanding it better. That's just one example. So I think, as you said, it's, it's about the design that we, where we need to be much better on and also in the training, thinking about the training modules that we deploy him. Thank you, thanks. I understand also, as we're all increasingly more aware and focused on what we do to address health equity, that there have been instances in the past and concern uh, going forward that technology could potentially exacerbate rather than um, reduce the disparities that are existing. So would you comment some of the, the learnings and or takeaways from the report and then your thoughts also for us for the future around um, worsening health disparities and inequities and what we might want to consider. Yeah, so that's also, that's indeed one area that we also um, looked a lot at in the report. In fact, uh, more than 80% of respondents considered health inequi uh, in uh, equity to be a driver of change in healthcare and what we can do here to, um, to improve that. And in fact, they, more than 70% actually said that over the next 10 years time, managing public health will be a key priority within the clinician's role. Um, when you then look at particular how we, um, you know, again, when you look at the technology and how, um, how it can drive inequality, one is clearly about accessibility of this technology. Um, um, some parts of um, society might be might not have access to the to 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 the technology then there might be um, hurdles around the content quality it might be very easy to get um, low quality medical content online but then how can you how can you judge that especially if you come from different different backgrounds so there's another really important implication for us to think about how can we how can we create high quality content that um, is very accessible, for example, to um, to patients across um, across the globe, across the society, and accessibility is not just having access to it, but also re being reflected in it. So when you look at um, let's say um, um, patient engagement videos, that that you feel that um, you know it could be related to the language, it could be. Uh, that you yourself are reflected in that uh, in those videos and understand them better. That's all really critical here. Um, and then finally, when we move more to to big data, and um, we need to ensure that um, the algorithms we deploy in in some of our clini clin um, um, clinical decision support tools that um, they don't have um, biases. In fact. Um, in any kind of um, clinical decision support tool, we need to ensure that um, that we, we remove these biases that are still very much prevalent across the board. 
Thank you. Thanks. There are so many aspects of their report that I found of great interest. Another was um, in reference to the relationship between the individual seeking care and the provider of that care and how, as we know, uh, that relationship continues to evolve. Again, I'll use the word challenges and opportunities because they're, um, as you said, the quality of medical, online medical education, medical information is important. What are some of the, the, the takeaways for us to consider with respect to the evolving relationship with the individual and uh, the provider in, in your opinion? Yeah, so there are different um, different areas I would or we, we can explore here. One is that when I look at the um, so we we briefly touched on telehealth. So when you think about the relationship between provider and patient um, now more and more in a kind of telehealth setting, in the past um, it was relatively easy for the provider to um, to show empathy, express empathy to the patient. <clears throat> now. In a digital setup, it's much more, it's much more challenging. So, how can we train um, clinicians in this setting to indeed still keep on that that uh, and show that level of empathy? That's one one very important um, question. Another one is, of course, when you look at the um, the um, provider and patient relationship, patient being more and more um, empowered and knowing many 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 more things um, about about their health and actually taking their health much more in their hands, how can we ensure that this data or this information is shared with the, with the provider and they can have that type of dialogue around it? Um, that will be another really important thing to, to explore for us in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thanks. Another important aspect that the report covered was that indeed we are a growing and aging population across the globe and that we learned through the pandemic and even though we knew before that there is a significant in importance to focusing on prevention as well as public health and that depending on where one is in the world that can be even more of a challenge. Would you like to say anything more about the public health and prevention emphasis? Yeah, so we had here in the in the in the report some interesting findings. So one is that uh, more than 80% of clinicians really believe that the patients with age associated diseases will make up the majority of the patient population. And it's indeed also key driver of the overall change in healthcare. So for that, prevention becomes absolutely critical. So when we, when we design solutions, we need to more and more think about um, that as well and how can, how can we make it easier. Um, one example for that is um, we worked um, this year um, with Apple on a partnership of how you can um, you know, empower really the patients um, um, understanding more for example, drug interactions. Um, so um, in the latest iOS update, they had um, the new medication app. Um, in this medication app, we feed that with our, with our content, with our um, um, drug information content to then empower the, the patient to understand or to get these alerts much faster. So to support prevention if you, in, in that way, but of course, they always need to discuss it with the provider and pharmacist, but it gives them an additional level of um, it gives them an additional level that can support them um, in their in their preventive efforts, as an example. So these are some of these where we can help again in the design of um, of technology of how we can there improve prevention mechanisms more and more. Great. Well, our time is coming to a, a close. I would like to first again, thank you for what I think is a very informative report that will help us not only understand where we are, but gives us further insights on some of the opportunities we have going forward. Would you like to say some com summary comments about uh, the work and your plans for the future? Yeah, sure. Thanks, thanks Deborah. Firstly, I also very much enjoyed um, our, our conversation here, and also thank you again for for giving us the room for these important topics to 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 discuss. So what we what we committed to is to do um, this survey and this report really on an annual basis to also uh, constantly provide then this additional voice and amplify the voice of the frontline frontline healthcare workers on 
on the gaps that they see and the areas they see they they see that we we still have work to do so we can track that over time it won't be something that can be um solved obviously like in a in a very short period of time so we will need to continue that going forward and we we are also looking into how we can work with other groups um other organizations um, um other other entities to really frame here an overall agenda that can can support and improve and really uh, address these challenges that the front end healthcare healthcare workers uh, brought up in our in our survey and our report so I think the key thing is really to constantly provide that spotlight on these issues. Um, we will work from our end on when we look at our own product innovations, we, we use that, of course, that information to inform us, but we are also sharing that really globally with um, government officials, with other organizations to help them to really focus on these important items that are important for all of us, really. Yes, no, they are. And I thank you very much for this important contribution and the work that we collectively need to do going forward. Having these kinds of reports and spotlights on the, the defining not only what the current challenges and problems may be, but they also help then shine the light on the path of where we need to go going forward. So thank you so very much.